Hey, hey, Sammy Do coming to you live from Precious World Office Studios. Real estate mentor and coach and investor, founder of the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. I want to talk to you today about prerequis prerequisites that are necessary uh, in order to be in the real estate investing business. If you uh, ever thought about getting into the real estate investing business or if you are in the business and still trying to get your first or second deal, uh, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel because we come to you from a grassroots standpoint, giving you the golden nuggets, the secret sauce that you're not getting anywhere else. And I want to talk to you about the two prerequisites uh, to be in this business. Sammy Stay Duke, tuned. live from Precious World Studios, doing it again, dropping another golden nugget. isn't for everybody not everybody's cut out for this business so without these two requisites if you can't acquire these prerequisites this could be a money pit for you so this is why I want to give you the raw grassroots truth about how uh, what you would need in order to be successful in this business okay so we're talking about two prerequisites to get into this real estate business to get into wholesaling and other strategies and um, I talked to you about uh, the first prerequisite is to have a level of education. And uh, I told you the best way and the quickest way to get that will be to acquire a mentor. That will actually save you a whole lot of money. But I also uh, talked about that the second point is you got to have a set of skill, uh, a set of skill sets. And so uh, I do want to call out one uh, skill set that I want to talk a little bit about today and uh, that skill set is you, you have to be a learner a learner and if you are not able to learn you obviously will not be able to learn this business and do this business but uh, you have to be a learner because even in this business this business evolves as laws and regulations change uh, t strategies change and evolve you, you you have to still be able to learn so if you have challenges with learning new things if you have challenges with just simply learning you maybe you got to a point in your age or whatnot that you just feel like you can't learn anymore you know how they say you can't teach old dogs new trick uh, or you just have some other types of learning uh, disabilities I want to try to just give you uh, six points six points I've got some notes here so I can make sure I get them all out uh, that you want to uh, kind of incorporate in order to help you increase your learning skill set so you can be a learner always be a learner this is these six points gonna help you increase your learning skill set first point is you got to definitely stay get and stay organized you you have to be able to uh, have a uh, you know certain things that are absolute that you must must touch uh, that's going to impact your learning whether it's going to networking meetings in the business and learning strategies from some of the other players out there whether it's reading some books you know set time aside in your daily method of operation to read books or study some videos uh, whether it's spending time with your mentor your coach getting a hour that day or whatever time is necessary uh, with your coach or your mentor to take those impartations of what he's done and, and apply them to your business but you have to organize that and you have to get organized and you have to stay organized in fact uh, one of the skill sets uh, that I speak about is organizational um, so this is why organizational is important because it's also going to help you increase your learning uh, skill set you're to be a learner number two you got to be on time uh, there's too often where I've got folks reaching out for mentorship and they're they they want to show up late or not even show up at all and there's no communication about that 
let me tell you something in the world world in the real world with you know corporate uh, you get terminated you can get terminated by by what we call no call no show in the real world and if you're gonna treat your business any differently than that then you're not gonna have a business because the real world exists for a reason these are serious businesses that are in the business of making money and they're getting paid because they have standards if you're gonna treat your business as a rookie or a side hobby uh, then you really don't even need to spend time watching this video I mean because this is a business you want to be on time in fact you kind of sometimes want to be first because from a learning standpoint you want to be in the beginning of whatever is being presented or taught or spoken about or whatnot because generally speaking just from the the the, the, the guidelines of college educated English generally speaking when you are going to present on a topic you give the foundation of the topic up front you give the foundation so if you get to a place and you've already missed the foundation of what they're talking about what are you doing well, what is it what does it mean what do you do well, if you were here for the foundation you you would understand versus interrupting everybody else right um, so you definitely want to make sure you're there in the beginning, no matter what it is. And, and I'm going to just be frank with you. In the investment world, and if you're meeting with another investor, for instance, or a buyer or whatnot, if you're late, uh, that's a sign of disrespect to that person. Because time is money, and you know um, you don't want to be impacting people's money like that. So it, it will definitely hurt your credibility hurt your integrity in order to actually work with the people that you need to put money in your pocket so be on time be on time if not be early um, number three make sure you're taking good notes make sure you take some good notes and even if you don't think taking good notes are are good uh, they are because when I say that sometimes you, you take notes but you never really ever go back to those notes well Part of what taking notes do is help you record what you're taking even in your subconscious to some degree. So you definitely want to take notes. Um, taking notes is, is a good habit. And in this in this business, I guarantee you're probably going to refer back because this business, there's so many different places, so many different ways that you can go in this business. It's good to be able to go back to a note that you've taken and say, oh, boom, 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 boom. Whether it's notes on different vendors that we're using to support our business, notes on different strategies and the components of what those strategies would need to be, notes on uh, the conversation that was had with either the pros a prospect or a buyer or whatnot, uh, notes are good. And so definitely take notes. Um, you should see my desk. It's all filled up with notes. <laughs> um, number four. And this is uh, very important, and this is, I, I talked in another video about self-awareness. This is uh, what you really need to know. You need to know really what is your, learnings, uh, your learning style? What is your learning style? Generally speaking, there are three different learning styles. There are three different learning styles. Everybody have, have these three, but they're heightened in... Certain learning styles are heightened more so in others than in others. It doesn't mean that anything's wrong or handicapped or anything like that. It's just everybody kind of rotates in and out of all three, but some learning styles are a little bit more pertinent in their personality than others. Those learning styles are uh, audio, visual, and hands-on. Audio, so that's a learning style where you, you learn a lot because you're able to listen and you listen really well and you listen and you record what you, you're you hearing very well. You can kind of repeat back what you're being heard, what you're hearing and things of that nature. And that's the way you learn uh, visual, visual because uh, you're seeing something as, as to what's happening. And that's really how you record uh, and you're going to try to copy what you see when you uh, have visualized it and, and you've seen what's going on in front of you or however you, you try to copy that so that's the visual learning style and then there's that hands-on piece where um, you know sometimes hearing and seeing is just not enough let me just try to do this myself can you watch me do this while I'm trying to learn this as well 
everybody kind of rotates in and out of all three learning styles, but oftentimes um, one style is a little more heightened than the other. One style is a little bit more heightened than the other. I would tell you personally, I'm, I am more of a visual learner um, most, the majority of the times, but um, you know, hands-on also. Um, and I guess audio, it, it depends, I kind of depends on what I'm learning uh what what type of thing because there's some there are some things i learned that i'm not really that interested in but i have to learn it because uh there are some things i learned that i really really like and enjoy and there are some things you learn because you just happen to come across some information that it seems to be worthwhile learning and so i think because of that i, I might shift in between different learning styles there but there are generally three you want to know what yours are because when you have those types of learning styles, there are certain habits and things of that nature that you want to employ while you're learning. Number five, you want to ask questions. You want to ask questions. You've heard it said before, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Well, I might disagree with that a little bit. You don't want to just ask questions just to be asking questions and you're not really listening. You want to ask questions to make sure you understand uh, what, what is being conveyed to you, what's being taught to you. The best way... Uh, to, to ask questions is to ask questions based off of what you just heard. If they're, uh, 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 let me let me try to rephrase that. The best way to ask questions is 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 kind of to what you just heard to ask clarifying questions to make sure what you just heard is the way they were trying to convey it. Sometimes and very good teachers know that sometimes it's not always the message that is not being uh, ad adhered to or, or, or received well, sometimes it's the way the message is coming out. And so good teachers also know that if you got 30 people in a class and they're all hearing the same thing, but yet not getting the message, sometimes the teacher know they got to adjust their messaging. On the same token, if, if 29 folks are getting and one is not, then that one might have a different way of a learning style and that one definitely has rights and we encourage to ask questions. But you definitely want to ask clarifying questions. So those those questions that you ask will help you um, uh, receive the information in your own learning style. Believe it or not, it, it, it's an auto response to help you uh, 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 put in position the material that you're learning into a style that you better understand. So who's better to ask the question than yourself when it comes to your learning style? So definitely want to make sure you ask some questions. Uh, there's no such thing as a stupid question, so definitely want to make sure you ask. And then last, and most importantly, and this is where I have a lot of challenges with my students, and, uh, and that is execution. Execution. Too often when I'm when I have my students and I'm teaching real, uh, real estate investing from wholesaling and other strategies, too often we have we have some great conversations and they, you know they know that I can kind of lecture a little bit and we they receive that well and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, they sometimes don't execute. And so when we are back on the phone again talking about uh, progress it oftentimes result in, well, they never executed the things that we talked about in the past. I didn't get a single phone call to clarify anything, didn't get any follow-up questions or anything, just absolute didn't do anything with it. And that is going to really uh, not allow you to learn much anyway because you're not putting into practice what you're, what you're learning. So you definitely want to execute the things that you've learned. Um, being a learner in this business is a critical skill set that is you always uh, you always want to be on on point, and it's always evolving in this business. So you you always want to be open. You know, in the state of Illinois, for instance, uh, they've changed the laws there, where now you can't even do any wholesaling. Uh, well, you can do two a year, and that's it. Uh, without a license and then after that now you got to get a license so now you, then you have to ask yourself well why 
what 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 are the challenges with getting the license? What what impact does it have on the business or not? And uh, uh, I can get into that in a total different video, but just understand that having a license impacts your business as an investor uh, in certain in a number of certain ways. So they've pretty much blown up uh, the ability to wholesale. Then there are other strategies you can do there, but wholesaling is not the one that will be a predominant strategy. So. How, how do I know? Learning. Learning. You kind of keep up with articles and events that's happening in the industry so you can kind of stay in front and not get caught behind. But you always have to be a learner and I want to invite you to uh, get some additional teachings from me if you like by setting a 30 minute free consult with me. Utilizing the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline link in the description of this video. And you can get on my calendar and we can talk about your business, what your, 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 your aspirations are. And if you want a longer term one-on-one uh, -on -one mentorship and coach, uh, what I would require for that as well. And um, help you to get your first or second deal in the next 30 to 60 days. So uh, until then, I'll see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. Hey, hey, Sammy, dude, do rude back at you. Hey, uh... Are you smelling when I'm cooking? Are you picking up when I'm putting down? You like these golden nuggets that we are dropping at you? Well, if you do, please like the video that you just seen. Also, subscribe to this platform. You can do that by hitting the red uh, subscribe now button somewhere here or there. Uh, look for it, hit the subscribe button. Uh, that would encourage me to continue to put out uh, more content like this. And uh, check out my library of other videos as well. Also, <laughs> Don't forget, if you need to set your appointment, the link is in the description, Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. And until then, I will see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. God bless Sammy. Doom, doom, doom.